So you have your Raspberry Pi set up for the first time and you've just managed to get the operating system on it. Now there are two main ways that you can interact with your Raspberry Pi. One is in desktop mode where we connect a keyboard, mouse and monitor to the screen and we interact in it very much the same way as we would a Windows machine or a Mac machine, something like that. And we have a keyboard and mouse and we can load up all the applications like our Python IDEs, our things like our Scratch programming languages and all the applications that you often see on the main desktop of the, of the device. The second way is what we call headless mode or CLI only mode. This is when you access the Raspberry Pi using external software to connect into the Pi and these are situations when you can't necessarily connect a keyboard, mouse and monitor to the device. So examples of this could be if you wanted to put your Raspberry Pi outside and you wanted to put a camera onto it and monitor wildlife activity or for example if you wanted to put one in a remote location to take temperature sensors such as a garage where you're not always going to necessarily be able to have a monitor running. This video is going to break down the two different modes and show you how to set them up and how to access them through different devices. So here we have our first mode which we call the desktop mode. The desktop mode gives us this lovely graphical interface and it allows us to use a keyboard and mouse but particularly the mouse which is the big difference and it allows us to uh, have graphical interfaces to all of the different programs we want to use. So if we want to make a change to our Raspberry Pi, let's say for example we're going to change one of the system settings, we go up to the Raspberry logo which is our start menu button and we come down to preferences and let's say we want to make a change to our systems configuration. Let's have a look and so let's say for example we want to change our password. So in here I'm going to change my password. There we go that's been changed and I click OK and that's been um, received and it's successful. So the other way we could change the password is instead of using the graphical interface, we could just type in commands into the Pi. Now to do this, we need to use a program called Terminal. And in here, we would type in the commands we wanted to use. So for example, the command we're going to use is going to be pass wd. Okay, there we go. So we're going to change our password. So we have to put in the current password and we have to put in a new password and then just confirm that password. Okay, and our password has now been updated. Both do the exact same thing, they changed the password on our Raspberry Pi, but one we've used the graphical interface or the desktop software, the other one we've used a command prompt to type in our password. So obviously both of these, the configuration tool and the terminal prompt are both within inside the desktop. So we wouldn't consider the terminal as a headless system. To make this a headless system, we have to enable a service called SSH, which stands for Secure Shell. And that allows us to access this terminal prompt without having to plug in HDMI cables, keyboard and mice into the Pi, and allows us to access the system over our network from a different device such as a laptop, PC, or even a mobile phone. So to get this working, we need to go into the interface section of our Raspberry Pi configuration and enable SSH and then click OK. Now we've enabled the SSH server, we need to try and see if we can access the Raspberry Pi from an external machine. But to do that, we need to find the IP address of our Raspberry Pi. Now the simplest thing to do is to go through the terminal prompt and use the command IF, which is for interface config. Now what this will do is it will show us a list of the interfaces that are currently enabled on our Raspberry Pi. So as you can see here, we have three different interfaces. We have Ethernet 0, LO, and WLAN 0. Now ETH 0 is the LAN port on the Raspberry Pi where we would plug in a physical cable. This is what's called the local loopback adapter, which you don't need to worry about for now. And the WLAN 0 is the wireless card that we have working. Because we don't have a LAN port working at the moment, we won't see an IP address here. As I'm using my wireless adapter, I will see this is the IP address that I will need to connect to with my external system. So write that down and remember that for later. So let's switch over to our laptop or PC. So there are a few pieces of software you can use to connect to your Raspberry Pi in headless mode, but the most common one is one called Putty. And the first link here at putty.org, and we're going to click here to download a copy of Putty. And there are lots of different versions that you may or may not want to install, but what I'm going to go for is this one here, which is the puttyinstaller.msi. It's the first option available and it tends to be the simplest and easiest. 
Now that's finished downloading, let's just open the folder and we're going to double click to install that software. Great, now that's installed we can quickly hit the Windows key and type PuTTY and the PuTTY app should appear. Now remember that IP address that was on your adapter earlier? You need to type that in. I'm going to type mine in which is 192.168.255.46. Now notice that we're using the SSH protocol which is what we've enabled and that works on TCP port 22. I'm going to call this one Mercury and click save and now I've got that preloaded for the future. So if I double click on that and I will get this warning. This is normal for the first time you ever connect to your Raspberry Pi from each device. When you enable the SSH server like we did earlier, it creates security keys that are exchanged between the two devices. This is just the exchange process and it's perfectly safe in this environment just to click yes so that the two devices start to trust each other. Then what we have is our login prompt. Let's get that ready there. Fantastic. So we're going to log in with the username that we have for our Pi. Now the default is Pi and we put that password in that we changed a moment ago. And now we have that exact same terminal prompt that you had on the desktop version earlier. But this time it's through my Windows PC and not directly on the Raspberry Pi. Now there's some things we want to do to the Raspberry Pi to truly make this a headless mode device. So let's quickly flip back to the Pi. Close this session and that's then finished. So if we now go down to our preferences again and the Raspberry Pi configuration, what we can see here is that we have a couple of options. Now when we talk about desktop and headless mode, we're talking about booting to the desktop or booting directly into the CLI. What we want to do is to, if we're going to turn this into a headless device, we want it to boot to the CLI. The reason we want to do that is because if we're only going to access the Raspberry Pi through an external SSH connection through PuTTY, we don't want the system to lose resources running this graphical interface in the background because we're not going to access it. Also, we probably don't want to use auto login as we're only going to be accessing the Raspberry Pi through a connection, which is always going to ask for a login, so we don't want that. So now we've made those two changes, we truly have what we would call a headless Raspberry Pi. And now what will happen is if we reboot the Pi, we come down and shut down this and reboot the Pi, this time, instead of it booting into the graphical interface, it will boot into the CLI mode. You will see now lots of information is pushed to the screen, and this is all the different services and systems that are going to be starting in the background for your Pi to make sure things work smoothly. Most operating systems like Windows normally hide this from you, but in this instance, we can see this. So we're going to log in again with Pi, and the password we put in earlier, and again, we have this CLI terminal headless mode Raspberry Pi. Now, if you wanted to go into the desktop from here, you'd simply type start X and the Raspberry Pi would go into the desktop mode. But obviously remember our default setting is now to reboot straight into the CLI mode. So as a quick bonus, I'm going to show you how I connect to my Raspberry Pi with my mobile phone in headless mode. One of the most useful pieces of software I use is a piece of software called Thing. You can get this on both Apple and iOS, and it is a network scanner. It will search your home network via wireless, looking for devices. So my software has previously scanned my network, but what you would do is up here, press the refresh button, and it will start to go through your environment and scanning your network to see what devices it can find. And as we scroll down here, we can see there is my Raspberry Pi. It's even identified that it is a Raspberry Pi, the MAC address of my wireless card and the IP address that my Pi is on. I can click on the Pi and then what we can do is we can scroll down to here and we'll click more and find open ports and what this should find is that it's open port 22 which is the SSH port that we opened earlier. We can click on that and we can connect with our SSH client. Now previously for that to work I installed an SSH client called Juice SSH. So let's go back to Thing. I'm going to give this our default username which is Pi. It's going to connect. I'm going to give it my password, remember password for the future, and click OK. And there we have our Raspberry Pi headless mode running from my Android device over my wireless network. We can send commands, enter, and there we can see that is our system process is running from my phone. And this allows me to send commands to my Raspberry Pi via my mobile phone. 
It's not something I use very often, but from time to time it can be very, very useful. Hopefully this tutorial has been useful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that bell to get future updates on when new videos come out. Thank you for watching.